So I'm very excited to introduce you to one of the artists today that is part of the Semillitas Virtual Community Library. Um, her name is Danielle Ellis, and she is from Dallas. I'll let her introduce herself and tell you a little bit about herself, and then we'll just have a little platica, a little chat. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. My name is Danielle. I am an Oak Cliff native here in Dallas, Texas. I'm an artist and um, my studio is Brass Fly Studios and my organization is Mermaid Spring Water. And so Danielle, do you wanna tell them what like media you work in? Um, I know that you're one of the, these people that are just like, I think creative all around. Um, what media do you work in and what, what's your favorite thing to, to work with? Oh, I work in all media. That means that I, I sculpt, I paint, I print make, I make jewelry, I sew, I um, garden. Uh, I, I even started doing a bit of film. So yes, and I write, I write as well. So maybe the question should have been, what do you not do? <laughs> I am terrible at knitting and crochet. <laughs> I try. Those are hard. Um, those are hard to do. <laughs> yeah, those are hard. I can do a little bit of crocheting, but it's like, it just has never clicked for me. I, I tried. I tried even um, learned on a loom. Um, I just finally accept that that's not my gift, but I admire everyone that does it. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you really are one of these people that are so creative. I'm always like in awe of all of the different things that you know and the things that you do. Um, and I love too that, um, I don't know, like I have one of your your little, I think it was like a doodle that you did one time. I have it on my, my studio wall. Um, and I think for you, it was a doodle, but like, I look at it and it's just like, oh my God, how did she do that? That's just like uh, absolutely brilliant. And I, I have it over here in my studio um, a, along with some other like work by other people. Um, but it, it, you make it look so easy. I think you make it look so easy. And um, we were talking earlier about how sometimes people think that like art is only what you see in like the museums or um, the art that we've seen like growing up in art books and um, that it's like in these like frou-frou, fancy, schmancy like art galleries. Um, and I think like your art is so beautiful, but it also feels like so comfortable and it feels like, I don't know, it just feels like something that's very like, it touches your heart and it just feels like home. Um, what's like your inspiration? What what inspires you when you create? Home, actually. <laughs> I, I, I love uh, my culture in particular and I love culture. And um, there is so much culture in Oak Cliff that um, I grew up in that I really, really appreciate, and I think of that all the time. Um, um, I think of our cultural similarities, and I, and I enjoy also the cultural differences. And it, and it fed me growing up, um, as far as being a creative, because everything was creative. I mean, the colors that people painted their houses. Um, sometimes, you know, when you got went on. Davis Street and all the stores back then and what was in the storefront windows and um, also in the bazaars to see the African art and everything like that. That was all happening in my neighborhood and the food. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's all this art, all this music and just this lovely uh, array of happiness that um, I love about our neighborhood. Yeah, and, and it is, it's, it's inspiring to see like all of the beautiful things um, around us. Um, and you mentioned that like, it's something that you've been doing since you were growing up. When did you realize you were an artist? 
When I was really, really little, the story goes is that my mom was sick of me um, drawing on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> so she started buying me art supplies, crayons and paper, and um, all the art supplies came from the drugstore, like the watercolors and everything. So I started working from there and my, my family pretty much encouraged it and kept me going creatively. Yeah. Nice. And I, I think that's important because sometimes like, um, like you get in trouble in school for like doodling on your your paper when you should be in class and like listening or like sometimes like I know I get onto my kids when they're like making you know a mess and and they're we have one that like we walked out the other day and and she had found spray paint and spray painted our um Spence with her name and, but it it's a way to like express like what you're thinking and, and it's it's art and it's creating um, kind of with your hands and using your brains. And so that's awesome that your parents encouraged that. And instead of you getting in trouble for it, that they were like, okay, let's get her something else to draw on and, and let's get her the things that are gonna help to, um, to encourage that. And look at you now. Oh, like, yes. And I, then I, I share. I shared it with my child, um, my daughter, she's autistic. Um, she was not talking really when she was younger. So um, one of the things that I got her to do was create art. I got, her art, got out my art supplies and she went to town and she still do artwork now. She's a great artist. She yeah. She is. I've seen like the things that she makes and I've, I've talked to her and yeah, I think um, seeing how talented she is at this age is just like, oh my God, what is she going to do by the time she's like 18, 20, 30? So yeah, we're, we're definitely going to follow her because she, yes, she's young. So I, I'm with, I'm, you know, you were saying this to the kids, she's young. Um, she makes music and, you know, she's with the times with, um, especially with the digital art and the, and the um, digital apps to make music. So um, she can be making art or music off a pad or a phone. Um, that is one of the um, super accessible things for some kids to um, create with. And um, the fact that she is utilizing that is great she is a great dj <laughs> and um she make her own uh compositions and um she also can draw too i'm really about um her having a technical hand even with um offline things because that's important as well and she does that and i i'm really proud of her i'm really proud of her yeah she's a pretty cool kid we really love her. Um, I love your kids too. <laughs> cool. I They're guess. pretty cool. We, we have some cool kids in, in, in the Oak Cliff area. Um, yes. What are, um, I know that you do art that's like in all of these different like um, mediums and, and you work, you sew, you, you, you garden, you do all of these different things, but you also, are very active in the community too. Um, yes. You want to talk to us about that work that you're doing? Yes. Um, I am part of an organization called Mermaid Spring Water, where we highlight the, the situation in Sand Branch, Texas. Sand Branch, Texas is a black township just outside of Dallas in Dallas County, where um, when um, the people were free, the African-American people were free. They created a town, this black township, and they've been great. But the, the situation now is that they do not have clean drinking water out of the tap. They do not have that. Um, so they've been fighting for years to be included into um, our water system so they can have clean drinking water out of the tap. And um, that's been a long fight. 
and I we bring light to that and also supply water um, when needed for them and um, make sure they're hydrated um, and and going and have access to this this beautiful uh, resource that we have that is water. Yeah. No, and I, I, I love that too, that you have um, used your artwork and, and your connections to, to bring um, some awareness to that because we yeah. do take it for granted. Yes, we really do take it for granted. So um, when people hear it's outrageous, you know, to hear someone write this close on home, this community write this close to us, not having the same access to resources that we have. So um, it makes you um, look at that and it's like, why, why? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what suggestions do you have for like kids? If kids wanted to do something to kind of make a difference in their communities too, like either with uh, Sand Branch or the water issue or just anything, what, what ideas or suggestions would you have for like kids and their families? What are some things that they could do? Easy things um, for um, kids to be merfolk is <laughs> to care about water. Um, do not waste water. Help your parents out. Don't let the faucets drip. Don't um, just let the water run um, endlessly for no need. Um, really conserve your water. Think about how precious our water resource is. Don't let anybody. Um, for trash or, or um, poisonous liquids um, down our sewer systems or anything like that. Just really care about um, our water, but the simplest with the kids, um, recycle um, or put your trash in the bins. Do not put them in the water. When you go in nature, take do not litter, keep your, um, trash with you so you can put it in the proper spaces. And um, that's pretty much it. Caring about your community is being a mer person. So you can do this. Yeah, I love that too, being a mer, per mer person. Um, yes. Because like we don't realize that when we just throw trash out, like a lot of times it ends up in like in our waterways, right? Yes. Like we throw something away in like, on the sidewalk or the neighborhood, but it eventually makes its way to like the rivers and lakes and things like that. Yes, yes. And it affects um, our, our lovely uh, water creatures as well as um, creatures on land uh, because they need water too. So we do not need them to um, be entangled in trash, so yeah. yes. And the craft that you will be, um, we, Danielle recorded this really cool, fun video um, for an art activity, and it is a printmaking activity. And um, all of the supplies that you need will be in our August kit. Uh, and you will be able to pick it up at uh, Recipe Oak Cliff, at Owenwood Farm Neighborhood Center, and Maroches Bakery in August. and. You can find that information on our website or on our social media. But um, she came up with this really cool and easy printmaking activity, um, and it involves a mermaid, right? And so, yes, you said earlier too, just and I, I love that. Um, just be a mermaid, be a merfolk. Me, um, I love that. I think that's like such a cool. Uh, I don't know. I, I I'm partial to mermaids, and and I love them to begin with. But I think the bringing awareness to the, the need for clean water and, and helping folks to understand that um, even in a city like Dallas, that you know, a worldly city, everybody around the world knows Dallas and um, that we have people in our community who don't have access to something that a lot of us take for granted, like water. And, and that's not okay. And so I love that you've been able to use your talent to also bring awareness to that. Yes, in the winter, uh, when um, the power was down and um, people didn't have water, we distributed a lot of water in the community. Um, so I think a lot of people are aware now that how 
uh, important it is to have water as a resource. And um, and I think I think um, we have a lot of great kids that's going to grow up to with that awareness and and share that. And I also, as far as mermaids and merfolk, and there's so many legends out there that surrounding water. I will say, go out and read and find these legends all around the world. It's all around the world. Um, you can find them in your cultures and beyond about um, all these, um, there's these fantas fantasiful, I can't talk, these great, <laughs> these great um, um, creatures and, and deities and um, just so much folklore of surrounding water it, because it's so it's water makes up um i think about 70 percent of our bodies so of course there's going to be this wonderful uh, array of stories surrounding water and um caring about water you're instantly one of us <laughs> i i love that and, and as you said that I, I think it would also be cool like once the kids do the printmaking activity uh, maybe we can challenge them to create their own mermaid story that goes with it. That'd be a oh, absolutely. And what's so great about that craft? Um, the materials are so easy to acquire. Mm -hmm. um, if they ever want to um, do future crafts with the same materials, you could find them in the grocery store. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it it's one of I love the the printmaking. I it's something that like I've started uh, trying to kind of play with a little bit, and it's so much fun. Um, and the way that you teach it is really easy too. And so I think the families are gonna really enjoy that. Um, if somebody wanted to uh, donate or support Mermaid Spring Water, um, who or where could they get information on that? Well, they can follow us on Instagram or Facebook um, at Mermaid Spring Water, exactly as is. And we can keep you abreast of anything new that's going on with us, any volunteer drives. Or, um, and we are, they could either um, go to Etsy, which is also Mermaid Spring Water, and buy a print. Each print, 100%, goes into our um, cause. And um, whenever Sam Branch asks for it and want it, we're sending them water. So um, keep keep following us and you'll see what's next with mermaids. Um, be involved. Awesome. And if they wanted to follow and support your work as just in, as an artist, um, what do you have coming up or what do you have um, that's in the works or where could they follow you? Well, they can follow me at, um, at Facebook at um, Brassfly Studios, um, or they can follow me on Etsy, Brassfly Studios. I plan on having new work there. I also have work on Redbubble, and they can buy prints or even buy a spiral with my artwork on it. Um, the next thing that's coming for me, I am hoping to have very soon even more affordable, accessible art through the um, art of downloads, doing digital downloads. Um, so for um, just maybe a few dollars, um, you're buying a quick print that, uh, that you can print out, a piece of art that you can print out or use as your screensaver or uh, anything that you like, actually. So that's upcoming. And also I am going to be sewing quite a bit. So you may see on Etsy, the Etsy store, more um, simple, lovely outfits that um, you can buy where I take fabrics and upcycle fabrics to make original pieces. Awesome. So then, um... We'll be sure to post all of your information too on the Semihitas Facebook page, on the Instagram page, and also on our website. So that way people can follow you and get your info and um, see all of the great work that you're doing. 
Wonderful. I, I'm a, I love your organization. Um, I really um, I'm very happy to be part of this. I know I'm so glad that like we met and it was just kind of random and, and we've become like great friends. I feel like you're like family now. Yeah, you're a sister to me. Yes. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. And um, we had a few glitches earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right <laughs> um but we got it taken care of and i can't wait for people to see your activity and um yeah and they should tag your um your your organization so i can see the work i can't wait to see if they uploaded pieces and tag you i am looking forward to seeing their creations Yes, thank you for reminding me about that. Um, anything that um, you make that's from the uh, kits that you get this summer, you can tag me on it, you can tag um, Danielle. And um, at the end of the month, what I'll be doing is doing a little raffle with like little books and, and different little uh, gifts for everybody that um, is basically entered into the drawing. We'll, we'll do some giveaways for you. So. Can't wait to see what all you create. Me neither. It's gonna be it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be going real dope. <laughs> I know, I know, I can't wait. Um, but thank you so much, Danielle. And um, it was great talking to you. And then we'll be visiting with you again shortly, I hope. Yes, yes, thank you. Bye.